Hi, and welcome to another episode of Who's Zooming Who with myself, Ken McCarthy. And as our end of season one special, even calling it a season sounds a bit strange. Uh, and on this final episode, for a couple of weeks at any rate, uh, I don't have just one, but I have two guests. Uh, joining me are Lorraine Gallagher and Trevor Boland, both of whom work in the head. Uh, I came across um, Trevor and Lorraine, well, I had, I think I'd known Trevor uh, already from I interactions on, on Twitter or maybe LinkedIn or something like that, but uh, they ran a wonderful webinar just a short couple of weeks ago on uh, accessible PowerPoint. Uh, and we're going to talk about that a little bit in a minute. But at the end of the webinar, uh, Trevor mentioned that uh, they should start a podcast. And I said, no, I can't be letting them start a podcast when I have a podcast. So I'll, inv I'll invite them on mine instead. But no, joke, all jokes aside, you, could, you, you, should, you should start a podcast. You work wonderfully well together that day. So I'm going to introduce, uh, I'm going to ask Lorraine to introduce herself first. Lorraine works as information and training officer at AHEAD. Uh, and after that, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to Trevor. So I'll hand over to yourself, Lorraine. And thanks very much for coming on the, on the show. Oh, you're so welcome. And I just want to apologize to all the viewers that my face looks totally white out. But unfortunately, it doesn't matter where I sit in this room, whether I close the blinds, whether I open the blinds, I still look the same. So apologies for anyone who thinks, my God, you won with the white makeup. So yeah, I'm the information training officer in Ahead, and I'm in Ahead a long time. It's 15 years. Oh my God, where's it gone? So, um, so I'm the person who, if you're ringing Ahead, you'd probably talk to me first. So you could be a parent, you could be a student, you could be an academic, or you could be an employer. Now in AHEAD, we do work across different areas. So my job is kind of a broad job in that I seem to be able to dip into the different areas, which is great. Um, so that's my job kind of in a nutshell, I suppose. And in AHEAD, it's very sm people think that we're huge and maybe we should keep you know, letting the world think that we are huge when we're actually tiny. But we do a huge amount of work in AHEAD um, because we're able to, you know, as staff, work across different areas and work with different people. So, it's a, so it is a really good place to work. So that's, that's me in a nutshell. Fantastic. And Trevor, your, your title is Digital Media and E-Learning Officer. So that's probably obviously why you, you featured more on my radar, um, seeing as I look after technology enhanced learning. Uh, so I'll ask you to do the same and, and just introduce, uh, introduce yourself. And stuff. Um, thanks a lot, Ken. Yeah, like uh, we've probably crossed paths uh, maybe a few times. I can't remember, but uh, I'll pretend that I remember every detail of every single account we've had, and it's all been amazing. So um, I've only been in a head very short time, I think five months. So uh, as well as being the digital officer, I'm Lorraine's personal assistant. So anything that she wants done, um, I have to do it instantly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um because That's i'm new to the role <laughs> so because i'm new to the role um uh, i'm still kind of finding uh, my way really uh so when i started off we were all preparing for the two day face to face ahead conference so um i and i was just kind of getting to know the organization um at then and then the covid kind of happened and then suddenly everything was turned upside down so then the two week Face, or today face-to-face -face conference which we've been preparing for for a few months then suddenly became like a 10-week online adventure uh, which was fantastic and it was great to kind of be part of something that I'd never even imagined possible before um, the COVID and uh, head experience so so like that um, ahead uh, I can definitely say like Lorraine is a great place to work it's a small team but it's very dynamic um, and they've been incredibly agile throughout this whole COVID situation and from that agility came about that uh, kind of the three webinars about accessibility so the accessibility for word accessibility for powerpoint and turning in the third one then uh, from uh, powerpoint to video um, so because i suppose we're responding to the situation a lot of my work has been about like trying to fit in what my role is about with what's going on right now so we can be relevant uh, and then from that, just even previous roles, um, if anyone's interested, I was an AT officer for a few years before this in higher education. For that, I was like two years as a part-time lecturer in higher education. And then I worked as an SNA in both primary and secondary schools before that. So there's been a thread of kind of disability throughout primary and secondary and higher education throughout most of my experience. So this is my first time not working directly with students. So it's been kind of interesting being 
working in terms of supporting staff kind of fully now as opposed to uh, supporting students so that's been a big change really and one that you know I'm really kind of like and I miss students still think they're fantastic and great but like I'm definitely like uh, liking working with like staff and supporting staff so that's me in a nutshell absolutely fantastic and and no look I, I just treat staff like their students as well so um, you, you're, you're probably safe enough doing that I didn't realize you, you were only in the in the role um, uh, such a short period of time uh, so I, I actually started my current role as head of technology enhanced learning in, in WIT uh, about uh, five months ago now as well uh, so we, 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 we have that in common if, if nothing else um, little did I think um, things would quite take the, the, the twists and turns that they did. Just just backing up to your, your conference there. So so yes, and I had been aware that, that you had moved from the two day conference to the ten week um online um series. That that see I, I didn't I have to admit I didn't attend any of the any of the, the sessions, but I did see lots of positive tweets and good feedback about it. That was an interesting choice to make in terms of going from a, a two day event to effectively making it a, a, a ten day event, I guess or, or yeah, uh, it was a bit of a change. Well, I suppose, like, luckily, you know, most of the time you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So there has been examples of fully online conference beforehand. So like, you know, the Alt Winter Conference is a fully online conference. So and I had presented in that with uh, Francis Boylan from the LCC in what was DIT at the time. So that was got a few years ago. And that was my first time ever engaging with like a purely online conference. So I suppose when we had to kind of think fast about how to reimagine the conference, like we kind of just took like that idea that already existed of an online conference. And then um, we just had, to, then there was the issue of just how to, you know, make it possible with whatever technologies were around. So of course, Zoom has been the answer to everyone's personal work life uh, problems. So. Uh, and the formula just seemed to work. Um, yeah, and I mean, Dara, um, our CEO, uh, is very flexible and he's really the, the person who allows all this agility in terms of how we work. So he's been fantastic to to really kind of get involved in whatever just solves the problem. Yeah, no, no, br brilliant. And you're, you're right, of course. And I'd, I'd have to say that, that Zoom is the answer to everything when I run a podcast called uh, Who's Zooming Who. So Lorraine, um, you're... you're, you're Personal assistant um, certainly gives a good um, <laughs> um, impression of what it's I know, like. To... I know Trevor. <laughs> I know, I, I know Trevor of old. He might say right. he's only in a head five months, but in fairness, he has been doing work for us and for you know for me as well for over oh, good few times. You know, lots of times over the years. In fact, I am um, the tutor on a, a course called a Head Start which is all about how to do um, supporting students with disabilities in education. And at the end of it, they have to do um, how to do a needs assessment. Now a needs assessment is what happens when, if you have disability and you disclose to the college, then they carry out a needs assessment to see what supports that you need while you're in college. And um, Trevor has come in, because we run a blended, now this is before, it's interesting before COVID, all the things we did. So this is a, um, it's kind of like, I suppose a 10 week course and one of the days is blended because everyone likes to meet in person and get to you know because they don't have people even though they work they work in an area they don't necessarily all get to meet and chat so it's kind of a networking event as well and we have speakers and trevor would have done the at section the the um, speed dating section on how to use the such technology so i do know trevor <laughs> well before we we work together in a head yeah so um yeah, I was, I was, go I was going to say that the title that you should probably give him instead of um, personal assistant is factotum. It sounds, mm -hmm. uh, so, sounds, sounds much more um, Latin, uh, but it just means generally uh, dog's body or uh, general <laughs> operative or, uh, you know. Jeez, I hope my uh, boss is not listening to this. <laughs> I'm going to be listening uh, to this. Anna, he might, he might, he, 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 he might, we, 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 we uh, and, I, and I did warn you beforehand, I can't edit any of these bits, uh, any of these bits out. Uh, well, I probably could, but I just don't know how. But so Lorraine, you mentioned there that obviously, you know, most of your work up until now in the head would be dealing with um, people physically on campus. Um, so, so now that the world suddenly moved online on the, on the 12th of March uh, as a result of the all campuses being closed, what were the, 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 the sort of, you know, I mean, obviously um, every student was discommoded 
um, and suddenly found themselves in a strange new world. What were the unique kind of experiences, I suppose, some of the students that she would have worked with um, found themselves facing as a result of that? Or um, what were the kind of things that, that you know, made... to me. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I mean, just as you're trying to talk to me there, my internet is actually unstable, right? And the funny thing is, like a lot of students, it was that worry about how am I going to actually study, do my exams, be part of the college, what's going to happen? And actually, even the Leaving Cert, there was a big debate around the Leaving Cert. And what was interesting was my, um, we had fed into a Department of Education uh, consultation around people say doing in other words there's a whole thing about bereavement and leaving search there was a whole discussion around you know can students go back and do the exams later on and then the department decided should we look at it in terms of reasonable accommodation if somebody became ill or you know during the leaving search could they then sit the exam later so we we got into this debate just before covid so it's kind of like been this kind of sort of move towards this different environment in terms of what's what's now happened so a lot of it is to do with like now i hope people can see i hope i'm still talking um you know internet connection how am i going to connect with my tutors what about the other students and then tutors contacting us like teaching staff going i don't know how to do accessible materials so hence myself and trevor would have done the webinar on how to and it's funny because for years i have been telling people you need to be doing tagging your documents doing the headers and they're not really when you think about if you look back at the podcast we did a lot of it is actually really easy stuff to do simple stuff to do but you look at on the ribbon on word every day and, and you don't use it you know because you don't know what it's for and now you do and it's so simple and if you just even make one or two simple changes you can change the access so brilliantly for so for such a big group of people so you know. Yeah, no, and, and, and in fairness, I, I got to go to um, one of your webinars, uh, the one on the accessible PowerPoint, uh, and I found it absolutely um, fascinating. Um, I was also impressed that you had huge numbers um, on, on those webinars as well. Um, so you could obviously see there was a, there was, there was a, a pent-up demand. Um, they're all available on, on the AHEAD website for people yeah. to, 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 to look back at um, in their own time um, afterwards. Obviously, um, it's not quite as interactive as, as, as the live event, but um, so maybe, maybe you'd like to talk a little bit about, uh, about each of the three webinars. I'll start with you, Lorraine, on, on, on the word one maybe, and just um, what were the kind of things you were hoping to get across or um, well, I suppose it's just about making, it wasn't about making it complicated. Like the thing about doing anything to do with making something accessible and you have to go into a computer and you have to start fiddling around, people get kind of like, oh no, I don't know what to do, I'm a bit afraid. Whereas we, when we did it, and it was Trevor really, so all cr credit to Trevor really, around we're a team, actually, we're no. It's a team uh, <laughs> initiative. Well, you know, doing it in such a way that it's demonstrated for the people. And actually, as people were looking at it, and, was, and the, the chat was coming up and questions, and people would say, oh, actually, would you do that bit again? You know, mm. would you do that bit again? And it was great to be able to just do that bit again and show people actually it's quite easy to do. Yeah, no, you, you, no. Had, you, had, you had a wonderful natural style um, certainly presenting uh, the one that I had seen and it was great that, that you, as you mentioned there, people were asking questions, you were able to kind of um, uh, prompt a uh, kind of a deeper dive uh, into maybe some of the, some of the, some of the functions and uh, functionality. So uh, I, I think, look, no more than most people, um, I probably use, PowerPoint every day and I probably use Word a fair amount as well but like that you kind of get familiar with with your own dare I say it bad habits of how you use these tools um, because that's just you use the bits that you that uh, you use the bits that you think you need in the way that you think they're supposed to be used um, so sometimes it is great to have someone to actually show you uh, how to use them properly so so yourself Trevor in terms of the second one the one that I had watched about ex uh, accessibility in PowerPoint um, uh, perhaps maybe you'd like to, to, to set, set, set us on that one and, and <clears throat> con convince people to visit your site and, and go and have a look at it. <laughs> well, I, I suppose we've kind of covered a lot of the reasons, but I suppose having worked in higher education for a number of years, 
you know, uh, you get to see, and certainly from a few conversations with students with disabilities, I mean, that need and desire for accessible PowerPoints. And I suppose from conversations with staff, I think the thought of making a PowerPoint accessible probably sounds a lot more complicated than what it actually is. So I suppose the point really, one of the points of the webinar was to make it you know, accessible to people, understandable and approachable, this whole topic of accessibility. And the good thing about working with Lorraine is that she's got like an easy kind of way about her. So that conversational aspect um, of the webinar was something that Lorraine definitely consciously wanted within the webinar. So it seems like a natural interaction between two people exploring accessibility because that's just how people naturally talk when they're learning um, something new. So from um, that kind of style, the, the need for PowerPoint kind of grew because I suppose we're living in an age where diversity has never been so diverse in education. So everyone's trying to figure out how to best support these students because maybe diversity a couple of years ago, not that long ago, seemed kind of smaller, like it was like a small number of students in your classroom. While now it seems like a bigger group of students, like it's much harder to ignore now. And that's why I think people are kind of at the point where they're engaging with UDL or accessibility um, are now maybe interacting more with uh, professional development, um, looking to engage in new courses to learn new skills. Uh, and I mean, what's nice and terrific about us ahead is that it's kind of bringing all this kind of together, whether it's the accessibility webinars about making PowerPoint and Word accessible for everyone, whether you're a student or a staff member or educator, but um, in terms of the courses that we're offering as well, I mean, the UDL badge, which um, Dara Ryder and Lisa Padden uh, began here in Ahead, um, has now grown and is for the short number of years it's been going, we're looking to kind of expand it and enlarge it for this September, October. And the work done there by, whether it's educators or administrators in higher education and uh, particularly in the FET sector as well, has been kind of mind blowing to see how they're bringing kind of UDL into their practices. So. So it's never been a really more amazing time to kind of see where accessibility fits in with UDL, how do UDL can kind of support how you teach, how there's like courses now about bringing UDL to help educators bring it in, even like we have a facilitator badge as well regarding UDL. So for people who want to kind of share that knowledge then about UDL, they now have that opportunity to take on that UDL badge and then go and facilitate sessions. And we're seeing that happening in, I think it's Donegal ETB, as well as, is it Cork ETB as well, I think? Yeah, Cork have a, they formed a network as well. Yeah. So there's been a lot of work going on in the background. And because of the whole COVID situation and the move to being online has really kind of pushed it forward. Because we've yeah. been banging on about UDL for, for a good few years, you know, and inclusion for a good few years. And now suddenly it's really come to the fore and the importance of it and the usefulness of it has really come to the fore. Yeah, I, I think I think the usefulness, uh, you've you definitely touched on something there and, and I'm, I'm aware of that um, digital badge that's run through the, the National Forum. Um, yeah. For teaching, and learning, yeah. did, for teaching and learning, yeah. Uh, there's a colleague of mine uh, actually just completed it and she spoke very, very highly of it, Fanula Brennan, um, and she actually did the facilitator one as well. So we're hoping to to, to, to piggyback on some of her efforts um, coming into the next next semester. Um, I know that uh, I had looked to sign up to do it myself, and it was probably just as well that I didn't, because I, I'm I'm great at signing up for these things. I'm terrible at finishing them. So um, uh, so I, I, I was no great loss um, to, to the class. But I do know that it, it's, I think it's, it's the single most popular badge that the forum offer uh, in terms of demand um, and regularly it's 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 oversubscribed um, as you talk about UDL I know that um, DCU have done some fantastic work uh, in that regard as well on on Moodle and they gave a presentation um, just a little while ago uh, to the Irish Universities Association um, uh, EDTL um, education digital technologies project um, on some of the work they've done in um, Moodle uh, in that regard. 
for someone who knows nothing, um, so presuming that th there is somebody out there who's been under a rock for the last while and doesn't know anything about a UDL, what's 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 the short uh, synopsis? And either of the two of you, or maybe both of you, want to give your maybe own well. uh, sh short synopsis mm -hmm. on. I think this is the perfect question for Lorraine. Oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, it comes from the original idea with universal design. Most people tuning into this, I'd be very surprised if they didn't know what universal design is, right? So really, if you go to any modern building, or even a not-so-modern building, usually now buildings have like a ramp at the front. It might have been retrofitted, added on, or it might have been part of the building, right? You go in, most public buildings have automatic doors, wide spaces, nicely designed, you know. So that's really about design and it's about making design in the, in the uh, built environment as accessible as possible to as many users as possible, right? So if you take that idea, it's a very simple idea actually, um, and it was taken on board by CAST, meaning which is an organization in America. So we would have worked with, as well with them around what this is. So if you take the idea of universal design in the environment, and making that as usable as, for as many people as possible, regardless of your shape, size, whether you're a wheelchair user, or whether you have a, pra a child in a pram or whatever, right? If you take the idea and then you move that into learning. So what would happen if you brought the, uh, the principles of universal design into the learning environment? So UDL is really universal design for learning. And that's kind of what it's all about. Is what if you took those ideas and tried to make the learning environment as user-friendly for as many students as possible, including those with disabilities. And as I always say, and everyone who knows me is probably sick of me saying this, if you're getting it right for the students with disabilities in the class, you are actually getting it right for everybody. So it's almost like turning the idea of, of reasonable accommodation, which is a legal term in Ireland, which is if you have a disability in Ireland, you're entitled to be reasonably accommodated in the learning environment, right? If you take the idea of that and a reasonable combination could be something as simple as notes online. So in universal design, we say, well, actually, if you're giving those notes online to the student who has a disability, why can't you give them to everybody? You know, mm -hmm. and and how advent and the thing is, tutors often say one of the things that a lot of staff would have said was, oh well, you know, if we provide the note in advance, people won't turn up, or if we you know, record it and make it available, people won't turn up. But like that, people may have other reasons that they can't turn up. And the other thing I, that they didn't, people suddenly realized was actually students realized, if I don't look at it now or attend the lecture now, that means I have to look at it later. That takes up my time. So students themselves get to realize, actually, it's not necessarily about not going to class. It's about being able to access the material when I need it. And now with COVID, it's kind of put it on its head anyway. But it, it didn't really happen. That people, yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. You know, and I suppose we, we, we would have seen, um, and I know certainly from talking to other people um, in these podcasts, is that w one of the, the silver linings, I guess, um, of uh, the global pandemic, if, if you can have a silver lining um, for a global pandemic, is that it, it's probably moved the baseline um, the digital baseline uh, a little bit higher than, than it was heretofore because you know obviously th there, were, there were plenty of lecturers who were used to going into a, a physical classroom standing in front of a group of students giving them physical notes um, and, and that's what they did because that's what that's what they always did. Um, suddenly that all had to change uh, because, mm. you know, if they didn't change, they weren't going to be able to interact with their students anymore. Um, so I guess, you know, we, we probably have moved the dial a, a little bit in terms of um, getting everybody online at, at some uh, level. Um, obviously things like universal design is obviously making that more accessible for for um, for all users um, yeah, and, and all, all students. Users, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it turns out actually because the student body is so diverse, right? All students need scaffolding, so it's a myth to say there's no such thing as an average student. That's actually yeah. a myth. You know, if you made a pair of trousers for the average person, I guarantee you that trouser wouldn't fit anybody. 
Yeah. You know, no, no, I, I think actually, uh, I was just about to say, it, you, 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 it wasn't quite a pair of trousers, but, uh, and I'll probably get this wrong as I always do. So I, I, I'm continuing a, a long tradition of misattributing and misquoting things. Um, but it was a study done uh, either with the U.S. Air Force or the RAF or something like that, where they it was, it was the U.S. Uh, yeah, yeah, where they designed a, 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 an airplane cockpit for the average airman, uh, and they found mm. that it worked for nobody. Um, yeah. So right. it's 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 um, uh, it's interesting when you when you when you when you, when you mention average that um, we we hold up average as being something special when it's it's probably far from it. Um, it's far from it. So in terms of the advice maybe are our practical steps um th this podcast is going to be going out at the start of july and, and we're we're still a couple of months away from the start of um what's probably going to be a far more interesting semester when you think about it um in that where we've just been um most students were nine or ten weeks into or eight eight nine or ten weeks into their semester um so it was only finishing off kind of the end um Obviously, there was a challenge of, of assessment and how uh, everything got assessed at the end of the semester, but um, that hurdle seems to have been successfully navigated as well. But now we're looking at um, a new college year, uh, and indeed some students who are coming to us for the first time and have never physically been to the, to the campus. Um, I know from our point of view, we're moving to what we're calling a heavily blended model. Um, we do intend to have some on-campus classes, um, but I, I suspect they will be minimized where practical because of things like social distancing. Um, so we're, we're probably going to come to rely on the online environment um, uh, much more than we would have at the start of previous years. So what are the kind of steps or, or the things that you will be recommending um, that lecturers who you know maybe weren't aware of universal design for learning maybe never gave much thought um to accessibility before they just stuck together powerpoints the way they always stuck together powerpoints um what are the kind of things that that that, that either or both of you think um people should be looking out for um at the start of a at the start of a new academic year well, start or? yeah um well i suppose already there's been a semester um where people have tried to make sense out of online teaching and learning so uh i suppose the first piece of advice is going to be kind of vague it's like you know your chances are everyone is reflecting on what worked and what didn't work so there's a high probability that you already know what definitely didn't work so people are probably trying to figure out how do i definitely not repeat these kind of mistakes that i made before um and then i suppose in terms of the solutions for that um just the conversations that I'm having with lecturers myself, the, the sometimes solutions are already within the, the college. So if you're using your VLE or your L LMS, chances are, you know, you're using either Blackboard or Canvas or a Brightspace or some kind of VLE or LMS that has all these kind of online facilities already. So maybe, you know, for those lectures I've always done face to face, they've never had to engage with the the LMS in kind of different ways before um you know and that's great and the face to face is amazing and i i definitely think there's always going to be a place for it it's never going to be gone um but i suppose where those kind of vles um now maybe for those lecturers who haven't engaged with the the vles before maybe now is a good motivator to kind of you know seek information about how best to use these systems um to not only support yourself um because then you don't have to worry about downloading different software from different websites and trying to reinvent the wheel for yourself is just try and figure out like what are all the solutions that your college or university or education center have already uh, and just start figuring out how these all kind of slot into that solution of you know teaching effectively kind of online um, and then with that even there's all these solutions within your email system so whether you have office 365 online or google uh, like gmail the g suite tools for education there's a lot of solutions within those as well. I mean, Office 365 is now turning into a great way of getting students and staff involved in using 
the, the facilities like Immersive Reader now in Office 365 and it's got, it makes everything like so readable now in terms of how it reads aloud text. You can resize the text, even choose different font styles. And even like I'm a big fan of the Google Suite as well. I think Google Docs is very intuitive. I love it. And both the Google Slides and Office 365 PowerPoint both have closed caption facilities. So if you are showing a PowerPoint online, you know, you can show those closed captions, you know, that kind of text that, that text that generates from when you talk um, now kind of live as you're presenting to students. So, I mean, there's never been so much choice um, when it comes to technology and technologies for education. And then I think that's where UDL is really going to kind of rise because with all these assistive technologies kind of embedded now within different kind of tools, you know, I, I really think, and echoing kind of what Lorena said, not only does it help students without disabilities, but students with disabilities as well, it's going to help them and create not only an even playing field, but also just help everyone kind of get through, you know, the, the this COVID challenge and, and beyond, yeah. Yeah, I just think just to add, sorry, just to add to what, oh, um, yeah, to what Trevor is saying, is really to be mindful of the diversity of your students and to communicate with them, right? So you're not this person who's like, way up there the, the lecturer oh my god you know it is to understand that your students have needs and to have a dialogue with them around what the needs are i mean if you're sending some it's like so for example do you know if there's somebody who's got a visual impairment or who is deaf who's in your lectures and are they actually able to participate like if you're sending um a pdf to somebody right who is blind perhaps they can't actually access it you know so like even though we talk about universal design really we're talking about allowing people to actually manipulate the materials you send them so that they can access them so like you know the problematic pdfs have you made sure that people can actually access the material um, and if they don't have access to broadband are there other ways that they're going to be able to access the learning you know because people do i mean even though we kind of said earlier, you know, lots of people do have broadband, there are still a huge amount of people who have to share equipment, you know, and stuff like that. And if you do not know where to get the answer, do you know where to go? So if you're stuck around, I'm not sure how to support somebody, do you know where to go to ask the questions, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, you're absolutely right. I think um, those kind of signposting and, and you touched on communication. Um, uh, it's probably the one overarching piece of advice I've given to most of the lecturers that I work with. Um, you know, all technology does is facilitate communication. So it, it really is at the end of the day about communication and, and about keeping in contact with your students. You touched on a number of other really interesting things there and I just want to come back to them quickly. I think Trevor mentioned every LMS except the one that we have, uh, which is Moodle. Uh, <laughs> But, that, but that's okay. Which um, one do you have? Sorry. Moodle. Uh, oh, Moodle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's, that's okay. We, we, I won't take it personally. Um, <laughs> and, and the immersive reader, um, my own son, I think I mentioned this to you in a previous conversation, uh, is dyslexic. Uh, and he's just after joining on Garda Shikona. And um, uh, their initial three weeks training was all online. Um, he's actually in Temple Moor this week uh, and he's going to be in the Garda station next week, which is even scarier. Um, but he, he, a large part of their move to online um, learning, which was all new for them as well, um, involved an awful lot of uh, reading. Um, and when I reminded him of immersive reader and showed him how it worked, it's it absolutely changed his life in terms of um rather than having to wade through very dense texts uh, having it read out to him um was um so 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 much easier in fact one of his classmates who who we happen to know beforehand uh who she she isn't dyslexic um she she took the tip as well and she was using immersive reader because it was far easier just to listen to um something mm. than to than to than, than to read it. So um again this probably echoes the 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 the, the some of the message that these tools um have a universal uh, applicability um for, for 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 all students. Um it is um I think that sort of multiple means of engagement and giving people the, the, the agency and control over being able to take 
um, the, the notes that you've provided. Uh, and again, I think that that was a big thing that that shone through in your um, PowerPoint um, webinar, um, where it was kind of you know you don't need to think about the fancy stuff like transitions and animations and all that other stuff. It really is having the, 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 the content laid out logically and using things like the proper headings so that it shows up in the, the, the contents and um, things like that. They, they were the bits that shone, shone for me. The other thing actually that was excellent as well, and I, and I should have mentioned it when we were talking about it earlier on, is, um, uh, and you, you, you no more than Lorraine just said there about signposting where the help is available. Um, you were very good in those webinars to point out um, additional online resources uh, and where they could be found either on your own website or in other organizations. And I'd certainly um, encourage people to, to, to go back and, uh, and check, those, uh, check those out uh, if for, for no other reason um, than to get some of those fantastic resources that, that you used. So overall, and I'm conscious that I've been talking to you for um, almost over a half an hour now, and I promise you that I, just, uh, I, I, I wouldn't have you. I wouldn't have you too long. Um, it's 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 been good. It's been good fun for me, as any of it. So hopefully, uh, I didn't scare you off too much, and maybe you will start that podcast uh, you were talking about. What's the advice that you'd probably give to students um, in terms of facing into, uh, I guess, a, a slightly uncertain uh, semester? Or what are the kind of things that 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 you think that they should um, perhaps look to? Well, I think definitely engage. Right? Don't decide. Oh you know, I'm a bit afraid, I don't know what's going to happen, so I'm not going to bother going to college. You know, now is the time. Go now. Don't leave it another year, because if you leave it another year, you may not go back. Now is your chance. If you get offered a place, you need to go for it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would say the same, really, yeah. Um, you know, ask, don't be afraid to ask questions. So, you know, if you are unsure, so even if you're a second, third, or fourth year student, and you just have just concerns about what you're facing in semester one, I mean, do feel free to engage with the support services. Um, so if you're a student with a disability, contact your disability service um, and, you know, just keep up to date with whatever real information is out there and make decisions about, you know, next year based on like tangible information that, you know, you, where you kind of empower yourself. Um, that's my main advice. Anyway. Yeah, no, I, I think I think it's fantastic, and you're absolutely right. And and uh, I often say it to any of the lecturers that I'm working with that they're, they're, and I know they say it as well. But uh, there's no stupid questions. I might give you a stupid answer, but you know, um, the, 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 the 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 question the question certainly won't be uh, won't be stupid. You've been very. Uh, You've been fantastic with, with your advice and insight and sharing it with us uh, on the podcast. It was an absolute pleasure uh, to have to have both of you on here. Uh, a new experience for me, having t two two heads to look at rather rather than one. Um, <laughs> More the next time. But possibly, yeah. Poss poss possibly, um, it's going to turn into a party podcast. Yeah, it's maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You could be, you yep. could be, you could be, you could be ideas though. <laughs> um, so all that remains for me to say is. Um, uh, thank you very much for your time uh, Lorraine Gallagher Trevor Boland from Ahead um, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you thank you very very much great thank thanks you. very much Ken thank you